Good morning. Good morning, Whiting Christian Church. My name is Mike Cahill. If you haven't been with us before, and I want to welcome you to Wednesday in the Word. So over the last several weeks, we have been talking just about some interesting connections between Jesus and things that are happening in the Old Testament. And today, uh, we look at Jesus as a figure of a prophet. So over the course of all of history, people have always wanted to communicate with God uh, or communicate with the gods. Uh, I know that my daughter comes home sometimes and she talks, talks about uh, Greek mythology and uh, just the idea of how people have tried to communicate with the gods before. And oftentimes uh, when people throughout history have tried to communicate with whoever they think their gods are, um, they've done some series of divination, right? They have uh, tried to interpret smoke rising uh, over a hill, or uh, they'll take the actually like the intestines of a goat or a lamb, and, and they'll look at it and try and uh, discern what God must be trying to say, or they'll, they'll take a, an oil spill pattern uh, in the water and and they'll look at it and, and they'll try and determine uh, what it is that the divine God wants us to do. Well, the great thing about the God that you and I serve, Yahweh God, um, you know, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Uh, the great thing about the God that we serve is that God wants to make sure that he communicates way clearer than that. Uh, he doesn't want us to uh, try and be looking for like little tiny things like, uh, oh, I, I drove to work and I splattered a bug on my windshield and I'm trying to look at the pattern of splats on the, on the windshield to determine what it is that God wants me to do. Or, uh, or, or maybe that, uh, uh, you know, you're walking along the sidewalk and a bird poops on the sidewalk and you, you have to, to look at the, uh, the pattern uh, that it leaves on the ground and, and, and try and figure out what God is saying. It, God doesn't operate that way. In fact, now he gives us scripture and he has often given us prophets uh, so that we know clearly what God is saying. In fact, the role of a prophet in the Old Testament uh, was to really tell people what God was saying. And oftentimes the prophet would either lead or he would follow whatever oracle or word from the Lord that he had had. Uh, and he would, uh, he would say, you know, thus saith the Lord. You know, in other words, hey, this word isn't from me, it's from God. And, and oftentimes, uh, most oftentimes, uh, the prophet was proved to be true in his words uh, because God would give them a sign. God would provide a sign for them. Uh, so uh, you remember some of the prophets in the Old Testament. And uh, let me just give you one uh, for an example. When uh, Gideon um, is asked and he is given an oracle from, from the Lord, uh, from God, um, he doesn't believe it at first. He's like, no, this poss can't possibly be true. Uh, and he's asking the Lord for some level of confirmation. And so what does Gideon do? Um, he's... He's sitting there, and he's wondering what's going to happen. And in Judges chapter 6, um, you know, as Gideon uh, walks through this, it says in Judges chapter 6, um, verse 20 and 21, Take the meat and the unleavened cakes and put them on this rock and pour the broth over them. And he did so. And then the messenger of the Lord reached out the tip of the staff that was in his hand, and he touched the meat and the unleavened cakes and fire sprang from the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened cakes, and the messenger of the Lord vanished from his sight. Okay, so what is happening here? Well, in Judges, uh, Gideon, as a prophet from the Lord, is given an oracle. Hey, I want you to say this. I want you to do this. And, uh, and a confirmation of that is provided by a sign, right, or a miracle. Well, one of the things that we see of Jesus uh, throughout his ministry is that Jesus acts like a prophet. Uh, not only later in his ministry, uh, for example, in Matthew chapter 23, uh, when Jesus hands out the woes, W-O-E woes, um, when Jesus is handing out the woes, he is acting uh, distinctly like a prophet. He is saying, hey, you need to repent 
you need to come back to the Lord because you have forgotten the covenant that he has made with you. You have forgotten about this covenant. You've forgotten about the relationship. And so he's acting like a prophet there. Now, he's acting like a prophet in another place, and that happens to be in the Sermon on the Mount, um, that many believe is more of a large oracle from the Lord um, that Jesus pronounces upon all people that they might know the kingdom of God and have great relationship with God. Now, the key here in understanding that Jesus is acting like a prophet is really two things. Number one, when Jesus has uh, goes through the Sermon on the Mount, um, he says things like, you have heard that it was said, but I say to you. You have heard that it was said, but I say to you. You've heard that it was said, but I say to you. Now, I told you earlier that the typical way that a prophet would go about speaking for God is, is by leading or following with, thus says the Lord. The Lord is saying this. But Jesus doesn't do that at all. Actually, he does something really radical. He says, I am saying to you. So what is Jesus doing here? And acting like a prophet, he's not only saying, I know what the Lord is saying, but I want you to know that I am the Lord. And so he is doing something radical. It, it, it's as if um, I, maybe I one day stood up and, and quoted John 3.16, for God so loved the world. And then at the end uh, of all of that, I said, but I say to you, you'd be shocked. I'd probably be fired. You'd wonder what was going on with me. Um, you'd think maybe that I needed some medicine. And the people at the end of the Sermon on the Mount are shocked. They're amazed. And it's not the sort of amazement um, that it's like, wow, what a great sermon. It's the sort of amazement where <clears throat> people are really wondering, like, what's going on with this guy? Because the text tells us he teaches as one that's not like the scribes and the teachers. Because he's saying he is God. Now, there's something that really important that happens at the end of the Sermon on the Mount. So Jesus comes down off of the mountain, okay? He comes down off of the mountain in the beginning of chapter 8, and he says, When he came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. And a man with leprosy came and knelt before him, and he said, Lord, if you're willing, make me clean. And Jesus reached out his hand and said, said to the man, I am willing, be clean. And immediately he was cured of leprosy. And Jesus said to him, see that you don't tell anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer this gift, uh, offer the gift Moses commanded as a testimony to them. So Jesus gives this large oracle, this word from the Lord. He says, I'm God. And then how does he follow it up? He follows it up with a way that the, the people would recognize that he is actually telling the truth, that he's actually a prophet, giving a prophet's word from the Lord. Remember what I told you, prophets often followed their words up, not just with thus says the Lord, but a sign from God, just like the one in Judges chapter 6 with Gideon. And Jesus does the same thing. He gives this wonderful oracle, here's who I am, I am the divine, and he follows it up with a miracle. And oftentimes, Throughout the Gospels, one of the things that we see is that Jesus is teaching, he's preaching, and then he's healing. And he's acting like a prophet when he does that. By, by providing miracles, by doing signs, what Jesus is saying is, I am who I say I am. I am God. I'm not just another good farm boy. I'm not just another carpenter. I'm not just another teacher. I am God. And so God confirms again that he's not trying to hide his communication with us. He's not trying to have us look for crazy signs in the sky. He's trying to say, look carefully. I have given you my word. I have given you my prophet. And I've proven that with signs. So I hope that today this has helped you connect some of what's going on in the Old Testament with Jesus. And I'll see you next week for another edition of Wednesday in the Word. God bless. Bye-bye.